the, the main criticism with air power is that uh, you've got a really low energy density. Um, and so as such, we've had to supplement that with a heat source to get that energy density up. Um, and I suppose that is the biggest challenge, probably the biggest challenge. The second challenge was trying to store compressed air uh, in a small car. You haven't got a lot of room to play with. Uh, to, so to try and integrate a compressed air cylinder or a, a way of storing this air and this energy uh, is, is a big challenge and uh, a one that I think we did, did okay to, to overcome. He was part of a team at Deakin University, situated in Geelong, Australia. They competed in Ford Motor Company's international competition to make the 21st century's Model T. The original Model T, designed by Ford, was the world's first inexpensively produced car for the masses. It used existing combustion engine technology, while its innovation was a simple design, easy to manufacture, and robust because it used European high-strength steel. The original Model T dominated a decade of car sales. Looking at it from a bigger, so standing back a bit and looking at a few different technologies. So we don't want to go electric with batteries that, you know, I think the Honda batteries over here cost about $11,000 to replace. So that's, that was already more than the value of the car that we were allowed to build. So we had a set criteria that we had to, to go by. This car had to be sold for seven grand US. Um, and so that, that automatically limits a lot of things out of it. The Ford Motor Company gave them advice, feedback, and support for their project. A project that would meet Ford's goals of producing the 21st century Model T. $20,000 in vehicle performance for a $7,000 consumer price tag. A robust, lightweight vehicle with minimal environmental impact and wide appeal to consumers in a diverse market. We tried to make it a very revolutionary vehicle. Um, so right from the start we wanted something that would change the the concept of a vehicle. We didn't want it to be just a modification of what's already out there. So um, one of the key aspects I suppose within that is the fact that it is a three-wheeled vehicle. This three-wheeled vehicle has been designed for stability so that the wheels will slip before the car tips over. Three-wheeled rickshaws are common in India and China, but three-wheeled cars are almost never seen in the US or Europe. Is this why you chose to have the third wheel in the back instead of the front? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's hard because with a three wheel vehicle, it's too easy to make it look like a motorcycle or uh, almost a little plane and that you've got this you know, bubble that you sit in with these three wheels around it. And some of our early designs very much looked like there was this cockpit with three wheels and it looked a little motorcycle-like and we were just going, this is, it's meant to be a car. And from a sales point of view, if it doesn't look like a car, people won't accept it as a car. So. It's, it's something we pushed really hard to achieve. This build allows the Model T squared to turn on the spot, making it easy to navigate into tight parking spaces. To ensure the wheel is stable at higher speeds, the wheel is passively damped by a rotary steering damper, similar to the ones on the handlebars of motorcycles. Okay, so once we decided on actually having an air-powered air car, uh, it then became the decision of how we're actually going to integrate that into the car. We decided on actually mounting them in the hubs. Compact in design, these wheel hub motors supply sufficient power to the vehicle and provide a high starting torque at very low revolutions of the shaft. It steers in a completely different manner to a normal car and that fitted in with our approach to considering the car within an urban context. So how the car can handle uh, itself within a city and within tight spaces. Places like Shanghai and Beijing was quite important to us. And another big thing was that they were actually fixed in place, so unlike standard seats, which slide backwards and forwards towards your steering wheel and dash. Uh, these were actually fixed in position and the steering wheel was actually what came out. And we could do this because we decided to eliminate all foot pedals. 
on the interior of the car and so everything was driven from the steering wheel which I mean the decision for that was we decided it was really a more intuitive way of controlling a car and from tests that we've we'd seen um, even though it's not really what people are used to as such um, as far as just general movement and control um, once they'd gotten used to the system, pe most people actually found it a better way of uh, controlling a vehicle. Underneath all the other features, the most important part of this car is its fuel tank and the structural role it plays. One of the primary things was to have that air tank in the middle of the car um, where the air tank is made out of carbon fiber. It's a very light but very, very stiff structure. Dynamic crash tests have revealed that carbon fiber tubes provide up to five times the energy absorption compared to equivalent steel tubes. Does this backbone provide strength to all sides of the car? Side impact, we have some side impact extruded aluminum beams that would transfer the loading into that uh, tubular structure in the middle of the car. Um, also our frontal suspension mounting points if you consider the load parts of uh, where that load's going to go, it's all generally tying into that central beam, which gives us a very high stiffness at a, a low cost because we have that, that air tank there already. So we uh, are making a dual purpose use out of that. They can roll form high strength steel, a process which takes sheets, strips or coiled stock and bends or forms it into shapes of essentially identical cross sections. This is done by feeding the metal between successive pairs of rolls that increasingly shape it until the desired cross-section is completed, adding both strength and rigidity to lightweight materials. This method reduces costs while keeping distribution simple as the cars are actually completed on dealership lots, just like their predecessor, the original Ford Model T. Why would anyone choose this car over a typical combustion engine vehicle, which provides safety and a large cargo area? Um, efficiency. These motors are really efficient, and the efficiency of converting the energy that's arriving at the motor into a kinetic energy is up around 80%, whereas a reciprocating engine, your petrol or your diesels, are at their best around the 40, 44, I think I've seen in some really big diesel engines. So the benefits are that we can have them out at the wheels and where that, uh, the engine usually sits, we can actually put people or luggage space and that can become much more usable than having to have a piston engine in there. So. Because of the engine's small size, the body becomes interchangeable with the chassis, allowing for a wide variety of body shapes and utilities depending on the user's needs. This is made possible because the motor and powertrain system are located in the wheel hubs and stay the same no matter the size or shape of the body. If your design is embraced by the market, what would happen to cars currently on the road? Uh, uh, we will get rid of, but we won't be able to get rid of the new cars, but uh, you know, the people that it looks to buy another car, they will be looking at uh, the new technology. Will switching to a compressed air engine have a negative effect on the economy? Will this result in a net loss of jobs during a time of global economic recession? I think we will create jobs um, because we need to change, not just making new car, but we need to change the old infrastructure. We need new factories that they are set up differently. Uh, we need new dyes for making new, new engines. Uh, we, need in, we will be needing filling stations. Deakin took their design to compete against combustion engines designed by universities the world over. I think when we took it to America, we were certainly happy with where we'd got, but we knew we were competing against some pretty impressive universities, and then to have them turn around and say, hey, yours is one of the showcase examples, was um, pretty amazing, actually. How long until we can see this in a showroom? Hopefully, sort of next two to three years, we came up with a prototype. Five years, we've hopefully sorted out a lot of the manufacturing issues. 
um, so maybe between five and seven years. Um, hopefully if, if a lot of people throw a lot of money into the project, we'll have it to you sooner. <laughs> but that's not too far away, 2015. The Model T Squared, the pneumatic automobile for $7,000, coming to you by 2015. However, the only way to keep this car from being shelved, like so many previous technologies and advanced car designs, is for the public to ask for it. Ask for an inexpensive car with an engine that runs on a plentiful, renewable resource. Ask for it, and the future will run on air. Over clouds, land and sea. Just the place for